gonna talk DevOps security for non-security people. We're gonna blast through the first unnecessary slides. Uh, no, not unnecessary. Thank you to our sponsors. They're doing God's work. Great, we can be here and so on and so forth. Um, here's some random stuff about me. You are free to read it if you want to or not. Uh, <clears throat> I've written, rewritten, practiced, repracticed, and destroyed this presentation I don't know how many times by now. And the absolute hardest one to, to write was the introduction. I've just destroyed it so many times ago. How do I do this? How the fuck do I get people interested in this? What do I say? Um, so instead of trying to do something fancy, I'm just going to say, um, we have like our developers developing stuff. And we have our environment people environmenting their stuff. I, <coughs> for one, find what's in between the most interesting of this. Uh, both politically and technically, I, I like to talk to people. I like to talk to developers and help them talk to these people, and I like to talk to these people and have to solve their problems and so on. And it's a topic, security in this place is a topic not much talked about. And so today I'm just going to talk about a couple of things I found during deep breath, during um, my work. Some weird stuff that showed up and some unexpected problems that we didn't think about. Um, <coughs> and also, uh, some solutions to this, of course. So the first one I'm going to mention is a uh, something we stumble upon quite often when we start working in Azure DevOps, and that is sort of the baseline security. Uh, of course, you should set up your Azure DevOps organization to talk to your Azure AD and use Azure AD for authentication. Um, you can use the built-in authentication in Azure DevOps as well. It's really decent, but it lacks a whole lot of features. Um, one thing, when you set this up, <coughs> that's quite common, it's, you see this group. This is a group that exists in Azure AD. And it's quite easy to think that, okay, this is the Azure DevOps administrator. If I just add myself to this group and remove everyone else, then we're secure. Everyone is like, no one can administrator. No one can do anything really weird. Really, really. <coughs> that is not entirely true, though. Uh, so you can set security on a whole lot of stuff in Azure DevOps. There's like Git repos, organizations, you have your projects, your build host, your whatever. Everything has security. And this one <coughs> actually only gives access to some basic Azure AD functionality. Um, I lost my mouse pointer. There we are. Uh, so, so what this group actually does is just give someone access to set up stuff like uh, organization creation and your personal access token and stuff. Not exactly what we want. I mean, absolutely, it's good to protect this stuff as well, but that's not exactly what most people are looking for when they're looking for an Azure AD administrative group. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm losing my mouse all the time. Come on. See, this is actually what I'm most worried about in this entire play, in this entire demo, in this entire session. I'm really, really shitty with PowerPoints. I have no idea how this works. Um, <clears throat> but what we actually are looking for in most places, and what we can fix, is uh, this. Uh, in Azure DevOps, we have our groups. This is our normal group setup. Uh, we have the project collection administrators. This is basically the god mode of Azure DevOps. Uh, and if you don't do it like me and add yourself. You can, if you add your, if you are running Azure AD authentication, you can instead add a normal group into this and say, this is the group of administrators. Makes sense, right? <coughs> and you can then PIM enable this group. And this is really, really useful. Something people seem to like. Something security people seem to like. Um, it makes sure that you don't administrator stuff as your day-to-day -day worker. There are way too many people sitting with their super domain account uh, in Azure DevOps when they do their day-to-day -day work. I do not need to be project collection administrator to push to my Git repos. So my first tip, <coughs> set up at least your administrative groups using uh, PIM. Uh, use PIM in Azure AD to enable your group memberships here. Um, this is a bit quirky, and I admit that. that's because uh, Azure DevOps use token-based login. So you get your tokens when you log in, and you get your groups in your token. And PIM takes a couple of minutes to add you to the group, and so on. So you have to log out, log back in, and so on. But 
hopefully just like you do not do your day-to-day -day work as domain admin, you shouldn't have to do this every day. And if you do this every day, <coughs> you're probably doing something wrong. Okay. <coughs> now, I would actually say that um, ACLs is kind of outside the scope of this, but I just wanted to mention this PIM enable thing. I found this a quite simple way of securing stuff. Um, apart from this, of course, you should absolutely make sure to set up your normal ACLs, your control list, make sure everyone has access to whatever. That's nothing really weird, nothing unexpected. Um, but before we leave uh, the concept or the topic of access control list or... Okay. Apparently, I can control stuff here. Before we leave this topic entirely, we are going to look at one more thing. There we go. Um, you have a lot of different resources in Azure DevOps uh, called protected resources. For example, service connections um, and also your build host and so on. All of these resources have a setting somewhere hidden inside them that says grant access to every single pipeline, grant access to all pipelines. And I cannot uh, believe how many places, customers I've showed up to that just goes, oh, and then you check this one and everything works. Um, one thing really interesting this does is it gives access to every single pipeline to this resource. <clears throat> and if I have access to a pipeline, I can then use this. And who has access to the pipelines? Well, everyone. Uh, this would give everyone access to my Azure environment. So just for Basic, before we leave this, do not check these boxes. Do not give access to the stuff that needs it. Because um, <clears throat> if, like I said, if I can access a service connection through a pipeline, then I can access that pipeline through a Git repo, and then everyone with some kind of access to a Git repo can access this. Which leads me into the fun part and the things that, okay, apparently, does anyone know how to make this permanent? I, I've switched this one, I don't know how many times now. Like I said, I'm shit with PowerPoint. But this does lead me quite well into the fun stuff and the sessions that are actually interesting. Um, <clears throat> once we have meticulously, meticulously set up our access control list, we actually know that the correct people have access to the correct stuff. It's time to start building your pipelines. This is where the fun begins, right? Um, <clears throat> So let's start looking at this as a story instead. There we go. And we have, why the f Okay. Let's do this. Thank you, internet. There we go. So, here, we have quite a standard setup, a quite standard repo. Uh, we have our module. This is, of course, a PowerShell module. Doesn't really matter in this case, whatever you build. Uh, we have our tests running, our uh, pester tests. Um, we have uh, build scripts. We have our pipeline, our normal build pipeline, the, that one. Uh, triggers on, on commits to main, um, runs our tests, make sure everything works, and then runs our build script. We also have uh, something quite commonly used in Azure DevOps, a verify pipeline. So we have a separate pipeline set up on every pull request created that just runs our tests and makes sure our code works. Quite standard, I know, because this is how I do it myself. I have another presentation on Thursday, which kind of will end up with this setup. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, so a couple of rhetorical questions before we move on. How many of you um, look at every code review you get or code commit you get or code pull request? How many of you just go up and look at them and make sure that the code is okay? A couple of you, good, good, good. How many of you have never had a big pull request and thought, no, I trust this person anyway, so I'm just <laughs> No one. <clears throat> yeah, that's more like it. Uh, the problem is this, even if you set up this like uh, ocular uh, reviews, it's quite easy to sneak stuff by because we're humans, we miss stuff. 
And again, if I can sneak stuff by you, I can do whatever I want in your uh, in your uh, code. Um, so, of course, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't set this up. We have the standard um, secure your pipeline so we can require reviewers and so on and so forth. And you can prevent people from reviewing their own code. And I'm absolutely saying you're, you should set this stuff up. I'm not going to because I'm alone on stage and if I were setting this up, I would need like a couple of accounts and juggle and I tried once and it went totally bonkers and shit presentation. But more interesting in this case is actually this one, the verification pipeline. <coughs> um, so, yeah, okay. This is the verification pipeline. It's set up to run every time someone creates a pull request, right? Now, um, what the fuck? I lost my slides. There we go. <coughs> I'm so nervous right now, and I'm oh, crashing. Crazy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, OK, so let's look what this does. This is something like many people in Azure DevOps work with. We set up our verification pipelines, and they work really good. They make sure our tests work, and so on, and so forth, and so on. But let's look at what it actually says here. It validates code by pre-merging and building pull request changes. Pre-merging being the key word here. This one merges code from pull requests into your repo and runs it. <coughs> yeah. OK. Now, who can create a pull request? Anyone? Oh, wrong button. There we go. <coughs> this is the basic security. This is not changed at all. This is default in Azure DevOps. We have here a readers group that probably should only be able to read our code, right? And contribute to pull requests. Yeah. <laughs> so let's look at how we can exploit this, right? Like I said, we have here normal repo. Let's just imagine for a couple of seconds that I don't have read access to this, or don't have read access, don't have write access. I have read access to this repo. What can I do? Well, of course, I can clone it. This is like standard behavior. This is what we all can do. I can <coughs> also hopefully find a button fork. This is basically the same thing as a clone, right? Just copy the shit to my own repository. Uh, so I can create a fork. Uh, let's, instead of doing this, we can take a <coughs> my own project. This is the one where I actually do have write access. This is some, some place where I can do stuff. We create our fork here. Oh, good, fast. I like fast. <coughs> I'm hoping the internet likes fast as well. Um, yeah, like you see, we have now in our own project, we have our own branch, we have our own everything, and I have suddenly read, uh, write access to this code. I can't change your pipelines. I can't do anything, right? Um, <coughs> so let's go into this verify pipeline for a second. And let's do this. Like I said, I still have write access here. And of course, like a good TV chef, I have some code copied, if I can just find my mouse pointer. There we go. Let's just do this. Can zoom a bit. Let's add another task to the pipeline, to the verification pipeline here. Uh, again, I can commit this, of course. This is only my, this is just in my own main. Doesn't, nothing weird happens, right? So I can commit this. And let's create a pull request from my main into the source of this, like this. So what do you think will happen? Well, it will run my baseline, okay. Ah, oh, fuck. Thank you, internet. I have somewhere misplaced a tab or something. Let's see if we can do this instead. Fortunately, I ran this a couple of days ago, so we can just take the cheating cheat code. Maybe. Hopefully. If I just... Sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Maybe if I look at the right code, right uh, one. 
Yeah, so what will happen? It will verify my code by pre-merging and running it. It will run my pester tests like it normally does, but it will also merge my absolutely nothing evil into the pipeline and do absolutely nothing evil in my pipeline. And remember what I said a couple of seconds ago. If a pipeline has access to, for example, your service connection to Azure, well, I, as a reader of your repository, have full access to your Azure environment. And that's probably not what a reader should have. That's probably not what we expected when we set it up as a reader, right? So, <clears throat> how do we solve this? Well, fortunately, we can again switch settings like this. There we go. <laughs> I'm really, really not good with this. Um, so how do we solve this problem? Well, we can split our code into different repos. And this is something that uh, we normally do uh, or try to do. We should try to do when we have, uh, especially when we have uh, really secure requirements, for example, deploying Azure resources. Um, now, separation of duties in this case, or separation of code, doesn't necessarily mean, you know, we lock this down so no one can access it. I can access both my repos. But if I give someone read access to the code repo, then at least they shouldn't be able to change anything else. Um, <clears throat> so how does this look? Well, we need to make a few changes. First of all, we have to have, like I said, separate repos. So we have only our code in this one. Now, you should actually not really follow this. This isn't really done, because I can still inject code in your build script here and say, if you run your build script, and it's quite common that people run the same pipeline on verification and so on. So even your scripts running in your pipeline, everything that runs in your at least verification pipeline, run it in a separate repository <coughs> like this. There are some minor changes you have to do when you do this. So you have to, instead of checking out your normal repo and doing the simple, simple YAML stuff, simple relative to what you know, um, you have to say trigger on another branch, trigger on another Git repo, something. We also have to add <coughs> manual checkout steps to make sure that we actually get the code and the YAML and so on to wherever we are building our stuff. But doing this, at least your readers probably still have read access, not full write. <clears throat> so, security tip number two. Separate your code from your pipelines, even if it just means, okay, now I'm wearing my code hat, now I'm wearing my pipeline hat. This quite well prevents the merge verification mess that we did seem to end up in every now and then. And again, there should be a way to do this permanently. <clears throat> okay. We have secured our repos. We used as ACLs. We have made sure no one can tamper with our pipeline files. All is good. Right? Yeah. I have 30 minutes to go, so probably no. Um, <clears throat> when running our build script, we normally should always use Azure hosted machines to build. There are a number of reasons why this is good. They are ephemeral. Uh, so once my build is done, it just tosses the machine away. Nothing can be left behind to the next uh, runner and so on. Uh, is really, really good. Um, they're not connected to anything private unless you have a service connection, of course. <coughs> so even when bad stuff comes into my pipeline, into my code, it can't interfere with the rest of the world. Um, <coughs> most of all, because security fucking sucks, it's boring as hell, and if you are running your own build host, build agents, you have to, of course, patch them and make sure that the software is up to date, and I mean, this is just normal, it becomes normal day-to-day -day computer management stuff. Probably something Ben can tell you how to do in Intune, I, for one, will never touch it. Unless you have really, really high security demands, uh, there is something called uh, CIS, the Center for Internet Security, and Azure, uh, they do, they do uh, security benchmarking. And, and Microsoft quite clearly states that the build agents in Azure DevOps 
They do not live up to cis hardening benchmarks. And if you're running government stuff or banking stuff, you might actually have to do this. And that sucks, but yeah. In our case, we are building a PowerShell model, module. It does absolutely not be, we do absolutely not need to live up to CIS hardening benchmarks. But of course, we have more problems in our pipeline. <laughs> so one of the most interesting problems, why I really like this, is, is can be boiled down to a question. Like, how do we secure something that's meant to be open? It's meant to be shared. We do want people to commit to our code. We want people to add stuff to our code, right? If they can't add it, then it's quite pointless. <coughs> um, and for me, one thing I really, really want people to do and argue a whole lot about, and I've even done presentations about, uh, is tests. Like, if you add code, you should add your tests, right? Uh, uh, I actually try to even do test-driven development, but, but if you do a pull request to one of my repos and at least doesn't include a baseline test, <coughs> then I would probably turn it down and say, please at least tell me what we should write a test for. Tell me something about your baseline test. So let's go into a pipeline and add some tests. There we go. Like I said, we now have separated <coughs> everything. We have our tests in here. And there we go. Let's add one more test, because we added some cool stuff, right? We added some new cool feature. Um, <coughs> oh. I It's really hard to keep track of where my mouse is going. Um, so let's add a really, really, really good test, right? It does a whole lot of useful stuff, absolutely. Now, hopefully, uh, <coughs> you do not build tests like this because it doesn't contain any code. We actually need to in include some stuff to it. Um, so let's add some code to our test to verify. Something like this. Um, Indentions, really good. There we go. We can commit this. And for once now, you already know that I can do a pull request to send one, so I'm just going to do it straight into to, uh, my normal workflow. We have to have a branch, though. Like this. We can create the pull request right away, because that's the whole goal of it. <coughs> there we go. Uh, so, like I said, <coughs> we run our verification pipeline, uh, and if the verification pipeline is good, we're going to accept it, and we're going to look at everything, and look at the code, and so on and so forth, and everything is fine and dandy. So, you probably can figure it out, but what do you think will happen? Well, the test will, of course, run green, true, will probably still be true, and... Uh, if I have automatic merge or someone just reading a whole bunch of code, it's just everything is green, right? You added your tests, everything is fine and dandy. Let's merge it. We can complete it like this. There we go. And like I said, I have a build pipeline, triggers on main. We have new code in main. So fortune. If Fortune is with me, we're currently building a new version. <coughs> we're running our pester tests. Everything is really fine. We have lots of new tests. Not so new. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> lots of new features uh, added. And of course, we run our build script. And I call this test driven destruction. It's really, really fun. So there's a problem in here. How do we lock down something meant to be open? Um, I can't really put my tests in a different repo, right? That way you can't add tests to my code. I want you to add tests to my code. <coughs> so how do we solve this one then? 
Let's. It's running with credentials of your test pipeline, or yeah, it's running as my test, uh, or uh, it's running as my build host. Uh, so whatever my build runner can do. Again, if I give in this access to uh, my Azure environment, <laughs> well, I've just written tests that produces Azure environment stuff. <coughs> so how do we prevent this without preventing you from writing tests and code? What, what do you think when I click slideshow now, the odds are that you get to see the wrong window? I would say fairly, fairly, fairly big. Emmanuel, when we were here yesterday, he was like, yeah, but just switch the screen. And I'm like, what? I have no idea. I, I, I tried to, I don't know. I have no idea how this works. This is really, really hard stuff. I'm just a tech. I don't know how PowerPoint works. Um, <coughs> one cool thing we can do, uh, cool, cool. one cool thing we can do in Azure DevOps is uh, use containers for our build scripts. If you go to your boss and say, hey, we, we were, we're going to use Docker containers, they're just going to open the wallet and go, yay, here's all my money, buy it, this is cool, this is buzzwordy, we're going to buy so many containers. Um, <coughs> fortunately, these are, aren't really that expensive. So We can add one or more containers in our pipeline and tell either our job to run everything in a container, and we can say, apart from this job, or we can say, run our job normally on our build host, and then just run this step in a container. <clears throat> so in order to mitigate this code injection through tests, we can add PowerShell through a container and run. Uh, now, by default, uh, when you do this, it will, um, it will mount your normal working folders um, as read-write, so you don't actually mitigate anything. But we can change this on this as well. Um, let's see if we can into this. So again, there are some minor changes we need to do to our code. We have our code separated still outside in its uh, in its own uh, repository, and we have our pipeline set up. Um, we can, like I said, include these containers in our uh, pipeline runner, <coughs> like this, so we see what happens. I'm just going to take the official Microsoft container. This is published through Microsoft public repo. It's just these few lines, and it will work magically and really, really fancy. Uh, we also have to tell our steps, our build steps, or our build jobs, to run in this container. This way, default, we will run everything in this container. Um, one thing we need to add specifically is this one. This tells uh, our container runner to mount the work folder, that is the folder where all our source code is stored, where our Git repos are cloned to, mount this one as read only. This way, we can't write anything back to it. We also have to do a bit of magic because it's a container-based uh, PowerShell image, so we don't have pester in it. We have to manually install pester. And above all, we have to tell it to run our build scripts directly on our host, because otherwise our build script will output a bin folder or to a read-only folder. won't really work. Um, <clears throat> so if we try, pray to the demo gods, and see if we can do this. Ah, we can actually look at the pre-run one. This way, when we now get new tests, you do your pull request, everything is fine and that, woohoo! And apparently it doesn't change this one to light mode. I hope you can see what it says anyway. So instead of injecting code into our build script now when we run it, since we mounted this share as read-only, we can't do this. And this, of course, I mean, tests, easy to show. And we have lots of test people here to know what you're talking about. Um, this, of course, works with everything. Like, if we run everything in a read-only container, uh, 
apart from the stuff that actually needs to output code. <coughs> Run everything in a container isolated because you do not want anything to write to your code, right? Good. Yeah, 15 minutes to go. I'm actually better on time than I expected. Speak too fast, forgot half of what I sh was supposed to say, probably. It's good so far, no worries. <laughs> we had this discussion earlier in the speaker's uh, session, like, remember, most people are not native English speaker. Talk slowly. <clears throat> yep, so let's see if we can start a presentation on the wrong screen. Yay! There we go. So, um, use your uh, use use uh, your uh, use containers to separate your steps to make sure that you can't inject code to make sure that everything that is run in your pipeline that shouldn't write code to your pipeline doesn't write code to your pipeline. And we're actually closing in on the end of our pipeline. Uh, we've looked at the backbone, uh, sort of setting up the ACLs. We've looked at the building of stuff, uh, isolating our build scripts, isolating our pipelines, and so on and so forth. <coughs> it's time to deploy, of course. And since it's Friday, it's just push to main and deploy, absolutely. I uh, can't argue with that logic. Push to main on Friday, always push to main on Friday. But I still have 13 minutes to go, so let's do some more demos. If you run a simple deploy, <coughs> the easiest kind, like publish to a PowerShell uh, repository or publish to a PowerShell gallery or uh, whatever it is, a simple deploy, do run it on Hasher hosted machines <coughs> because every piece of junk you put into your pipeline is a piece of junk that can be hacked or broken or injected to some way. The less shit we have in our pipeline, the smaller the chance that we get problems in our pipeline, right? If, however, you run something internal, uh, <coughs> one thing I forgot to mention in the very beginning, uh, we publish stuff to, to uh, blobs. If you run uh, something internal, it's time to set up some release agents. We need them to, to talk to our internal environment in some way. Now, currently, I'm using the, uh, in the, the pipeline we've looked at, we're using the AZ copy. Uh, through a uh, service connection. <coughs> and in many cases, we need to set up some way of accessing our internal resources. And hopefully, you are not one of these people who think that we should set up public access to our internal resources. Uh, not that I shit, but your security department will if you try to argue that I need public IPs to do stuff. From my experience, they do not really like this. This is where the scale set comes in, the sort of last step into our pipeline. Um, <coughs> this is not so much of an interesting demo, but we can still look at it. Uh, there is a lot of demonstrations on Azure, uh, on uh, Learn, on Docs, on how to set up scale sets, and this is not an Azure session, so I'm not going to do that, but stain. Bad stain. There are a couple of things in Azure DevOps in, uh, that we need to set up to make this work. We need to set up a service connection to Azure. This is what, uh, what we use uh, to sort of tell Azure to spin up a new machine, a new VM scale set machine. Uh, tells it to shut them down, tells them to do everything else. And I just learned from Jakob uh, Svensson's uh, presentation yesterday, you can do some really cool magic with these service connections and disable them and enable and so on and really, really good stuff. So go back, if you didn't see it yesterday, go back and look at it on YouTube when it's up there because I, I was impressed. Um, <clears throat> we need this service connection at least to do stuff. Now, remember what I said a while ago? about protected resources. Don't, do not click that button. There are far too many people that do. Um, once we have service connections set up, we need to create the actual scale set connection or the scale set uh, host. Like this, we have our scale sets set up and we have currently run a couple of jobs because I 
tried and failed to get this to work. Um, and scale sets are protected resources. Don't click the button. Do not click the button. Uh, when you're on the first time, it will say, uh, ask you, please, do we need, can we have access to this stuff? Just click grant one time, you're done. Let's see, where are we? So <clears throat> once we have set this up, we have gotten them to work, it's actually really, really easy. We can tell our pipelines to start using these uh, scale sets instead. If we go into the last one, we go. Just like before, a couple of minor changes we need to do. We need to add some stages and tell it to first run the build stage in, to, in our normal uh, Azure hosted machine. And then we add another stage that says deploy and run it on our, yes, I do know I misspelled the year and said 2002, I'm living historically awesome. Um, so once we've done this, we tell it to instead run this on our internal scale set and just again, like I did before, <coughs> we can go in and see how this looks. Instead of having one stage, we now have two stages and we can go in here and look how it's, uh, see how it looks. And we have our, uh, it first builds on our public uh, Azure machine and then it uh, publishes the stuff on our internal scale set pool. Really, really good. Most of all, because we also get this. <laughs> like this. Once we have set up an internal build resource, we can actually remove access to most of the stuff inside our environment and let this be hosted by someone else. Uh, you have system assigned managed identities on the scale set. It's dead easy to use these to access our internal resource. Um, so instead of having to manually have our service connections or manually having to have our uh, keys to our storage blob or whatever it is we want to publish to, we can use this login as a managed identity, run internal like NFS copy or whatever, uh, and we don't even need to have access to stuff anymore. Uh, whatever keys we need to have access to, put them in a key storage or a, a key... Tack. Key vault. Um, and we can even delegate management of this to someone else. Security department can take care of updating, running the key vault. I don't give a shit about this as well. Because this is kind of the last step here. Uh, <clears throat> we can store secrets in Azure DevOps. They have a secret storage. It's uh, 2048 bit RSA encrypted secret storage. Man, it's decent shit. Do you know what the security policy in Azure DevOps security is? Eh. <laughs> it's like, it's the best effort. We try to manage stuff, we try to keep them secret, and we try to, to uh, hide them from showing up in logs and so on, but if they do, well, yeah, it's your fault. We don't really care. If you store stuff in Azure Key Vault, well, they're quite highly regulated. And if you're running stuff in a somewhat security regulated company, they probably want good and high class standard before eh. So, <clears throat> yeah, run on scale sets or internal hosted machines. It's really, really simple to get started. And I can absolutely show this to you afterwards if you're interested. But as for now, just do it. Um, as a bonus, you also get the access logs from Azure. Uh, you, when someone accesses your keys, your internal stuff, you actually have proper logging. Because <coughs> this is kind of where this presentation goes full circle and to the end. We have logging in Azure DevOps. If I can just find the correct link. There we go. We have logging in Azure DevOps. That's good. I have three log lines right now. Um, <clears throat> I have done more than this in the last 45 minutes. It's decent. It logs stuff. Not that good. It 
doesn't have anything to click to search through the logs. If you have a lot of logs here, it yeah, can find it. It also have a massive retention policy of three months. Uh, so we have something called streams. That you can set up to forward your logs to, for example, Azure Monitor. Way, way better place to store logs than in Azure DevOps. Um, <clears throat> so when something happens, because shit does happen, shit will happen. If you haven't been hacked, cracked, broken already, you will be. And if, <clears throat> if you're not really doing this daily, chances are you need to track back a couple of months to see what's going on. And I can guarantee you that your security department, they will hate you if you answer, uh, I don't know, I have three months of logs. That's what you get. They are not going to appreciate that. So, so make sure to set up log forwarding as well, because then someone else can take care of this part as well. Because <clears throat> just like the title of the presentation says, I, whoops, you see my memes. You're not supposed to see the memes. <coughs> I'm not a security person. I don't know jack shit about security. Like, I, I have no idea what a CVS or whatever it is. They score stuff. I don't even know what it stands for. I, I, not a low level programmer, programming language person. I have no idea how to memory scan stuff for, for security breaches or security holes. In fact, I hate security. Security is my worst enemy. They are in the way for everything I want to do. I want to release stuff. I want to do fast and, you know, million releases a day. Um, but I kind of realized that if I think about stuff like this, if I try to fix this before it happens, then our security departments, they tend to leave me alone. They leave my back alone and let me just go ahead and do my stuff. So I'm guessing this is what they mean when they say we should shift left on security. Oops, sorry. Uh, they get me to think about security without actually caring about security, without thinking about security. It's just part of what I do. Okay, I, the, I discovered that we can inject stuff through our tests here. I should probably fix that, and then I can go to security and say, hey, can you set up a policy or do the boring shit so, so the next time this doesn't happen? And then they take care of it, or they don't. I don't really give a fuck. At least they don't bug me about this problem. They just leave me alone. And one last thing before I leave, because now I have two minutes for everything else. This is where the meme come in. If you call it DevSecOps, you have fundamentally misunderstood everything DevOps is, and you are dead fucking wrong and should be punched in the face. It's not DevSecOps, it's DevOps. It's collaboration between everyone. Security was supposed to be included from the beginning. Thank you. This is a hill I am willing to die on. Are there any questions? No. Huh? Um, I, I will show both the slides and uh, all the YAML files. Every single pipeline I've showed you here uh, in steps is included. So it will be up on the PSConf repository. But, but and the, the main point of the scale sets was to have them run in your it's, production environment with uh, managed credentials. Yeah, managed credentials and without having any public access. Because I can have one scale set that's locked down. Uh, because I do not check the allow every allow everyone to use this protected resource. Um, so I can have it internally locked down into one uh, organization in my Azure DevOps, and I no longer have to touch Azure at all. Uh, so so, so uh, basically, we found this in an AZ ops sort of style deploy, if you know what that is, like um, uh, enterprise scale architecture, Azure, like... We need to deploy resources in our Azure subscription. And we do not want to take care of security in Azure DevOps. And in Azure, that's two levels of security. 
So we've just locked down Azure entirely. As a, the only uh, credential that has access to this subscription is the managed credentials from the scale set. The only way you can deploy anything in our Azure subscription is through Azure DevOps. And that way, we do not have any uh, public, uh, no public IPs, no public access. We can track everything. Like, if you have access to this uh, repository, then, of course, you have access to our Azure resources. But, yeah, it's a great way of big red light in my face now. Get the fuck out. No. Uh, it's a great way of locking down stuff, and, and locking down stuff is good. Thanking you very much.